Today I am going to share a personal story that I kept quiet for way too long. Last month, so May just gone, I've been invited to speak on a health panel alongside incredible female health specialists on the topic of empowering women to take control of their female health at the largest health and wellness festival in Europe, Wellfest, which takes place in Ireland every single year and it's an incredible event and I've attended that event for many previous years before being asked to speak at it. I've been asked to share my story with HA, hypothalamic amenorrhea. Essentially it's a condition where you lose your period for three or more consecutive phases or in my case five years and speaking on that panel at that event has been very eye-opening to me and it made me realize that there is such a gap in the knowledge and the tools that women have when it comes to their own body, understanding their body, but also how to heal themselves. And there's so many women that are suffering in silence or are normalizing symptoms that are decreasing the quality of their life and just being either told to deal with it or they assume that it is part of being a woman and that that is something that they have to deal with. Truth being told, I haven't really shared my story with HA until recently, maybe a couple of months to a year where I've sporadically mentioned it on my social media. I've recently just in the last maybe three months spoken about it on other people's podcasts, but I haven't actually sat down and shared my story myself on my own podcast. And that's because I felt embarrassed. And for the bulk of those years, uh, I suffered in silence. And that is because I tied this identity to myself as somebody who is a fit and healthy person. I was sharing healthy diet tips, healthy recipes, workout videos. I had women that were messaging me, asking me for advice when it came to cultivating a more healthy lifestyle and achieving their goals, whether that be in around fitness, wellness, or health. But I didn't think that I was the definition of health, and I wasn't, you know? Not having my period made me feel like there was part of me missing, part of being a woman missing. And this is why I just kept it quiet for such a long period of time. But speaking at Wellfest and also just recently sharing bits and pieces of my story online and hearing from so many women who not necessarily suffer from HA, but other conditions when it comes to hormone imbalances or even knowing how to work with their cycle so that they can have better quality of life really inspired me to share my story and also what I have done to get more in tune with myself and help to heal myself and balance my hormones. So let's go back a number of years. I was fairly young when I first started the pill, 16 to be precise. And full disclosure, the only reason that I went on the pill in the first place was for contraceptive reasons. And while being on the pill, my period worked like clockwork. I could anticipate on the exact date that my period would arrive, how long it will last. To be fair, I didn't have much severe symptoms apart from the mild cramping and a little bit of pelvic pain. But apart from that, it was fairly unproblematic. And when I decided to come off the pill three years later to take a little break. To my surprise, my period never returned. And me being an ignorant 19 year old, I didn't think much of it. I just didn't really have the knowledge on the importance of having a healthy menstrual cycle. So, and to be honest, like when I was that age and I was in college, not having a monthly bleed was a bliss to me. You know, not having to deal with buying tampons, making sure that you carry a tampon with you at all times, just in case. Also choosing the appropriate thing to wear. Even when it came to nights out, I was like, this is amazing because it is not something I have to deal with and I can just crack on with my life nice and smoothly. But after a couple of months 
of still not having my period, I did start to get curious as to why it is not returning. Although I didn't have much knowledge around the menstrual cycle and the whole shebang with hormones and hormone imbalances, I knew that something was off. I knew that there has to be a reason why I don't have my period. And this is where I started to look into it and take ownership of my body and look for answers. And that went off to a great start with the most humiliating first experience at the gyno's office. Not only did she make me feel shameful for going on the pill in the first place, but also explained with certainty that there is no need to do anything about the fact that I don't have a period if I do not want to have kids right now. First of all, I never had it explained to me. What are the side effects of taking a pill? by my GP when I was first going on the pill. Second of all, nobody informed me of other non-hormonal contraceptive methods that I could use apart from the pill. It was prescribed to me without any questions asked. Second of all, that I know has not even questioned what my diet and lifestyle habits look like, which what I know now which I didn't back then, are like the most key factors to look into when it comes to our menstrual health. Anyway, me being naive, I did believe that, you know what, maybe she is right. Maybe I don't really need to worry about it if I don't want to have kids right now. I can just fix it down the line. So I cracked on with my life. But another couple of months went by and I just knew that it's not supposed to be like this. I just didn't feel right. I didn't feel good in my body. And it wasn't healthy that 12, 16 months went by and I still had not got my period back. So I looked more into it and I reached out to different gynecologists. I seen various GPs and practitioners. I even consulted with endocrinologists to find a reason why it was missing, but more so a solution on what I can actually do to be able to regain my period. And I've got scans, I got blood work done, and everyone, everyone either said to me, there is nothing wrong with me because they can't see anything on the scans, my ovaries look healthy, my blood work just looks fine, everything is in the optimal rep ranges. And side note, uh, what is normal does not mean that it's optimal, by the way. But their answer was either you don't need to worry about it because you're not trying to get pregnant, you can just work on that down the line, or here are more hormones, synthetic hormones, to try and bring your cycle back, which I was just so against because I knew that that is not solving the underlying issue, that is only masking the problem, and yes, temporarily it might fix it, but once I would come off these hormones, then I would still be faced with the same problem. And after so much frustration, I did give in. I did decide to try medication, to try hormones. Nothing was working. And at that point, I was just so done with the answers and solutions that the medical practitioners were trying to give me. And I decided, you know what, I'm just going to take it into my own hands because if I don't, then I'm going to be spinning around in circles. And not only was I putting out shit ton of money to get all these tests done and have all these consultations and get all these medications, but also my time and like my mental energy. So I started to do research and at that time I didn't actually know I had hypothalamic amenorrhea, but the more I read into it, the more I was starting to realize how unhealthy my lifestyle actually was. So what I thought I'm doing to be this fit and healthy person was actually harming my health and well-being. So my goals when it came to like the gym and my fitness journey were solely focused on aesthetics, which I haven't mentioned as of yet. So you might be listening thinking, you know, 
was it the pill that caused all that? But there is this other side of the story, which I do want to share because I don't think that it was necessarily the pill. It was also what I was doing and the lifestyle that I was leading that more than likely contributed to me losing my period and then not being able to regain it for such a long period of time. So at the time that I came off the pill, I was also in the midst of being this healthy and fit person and being obsessed, to be honest, obsessed about my body. And all I wanted was to shrink myself, to be the smallest version of myself possible, uh, to have shredded abs, that, that six pack, a tie gap, lean arms, lean legs. And what started off as a pursuit of wanting to be more confident in myself and have better self-esteem actually just turned into this like disordered obsession. And I really didn't know much about properly fueling yourself, balancing high intensity training with recovery, managing stress, optimizing sleep. All I knew was the stuff that my beloved fitness influencers were sharing online. So I would follow their diet and training regimes, watch YouTube videos, read blog posts, and what they were doing, I was doing because I really desired the body composition that they had. And again, naive young Martina just thought if I do what they're doing, then I'm going to look like them. And I jumped from trend to trend in terms of diets and I'm not even going to go into it in this episode. I talked about it in my previous episodes, but intermittent fasting, keto, cutting out carbs, going low fat and low calorie foods, um, eating 1200 calories or lower. And I would applaud myself if I ate as little as possible. Also exercising every single day. I felt like I need to exercise every single day. And again, I applauded myself for the no days off mentality. Like, look at me, I'm so motivated. I'm so disciplined. Sometimes I was even training twice a day. I was using exercise as a form of punishment too. So anything, anytime that I would eat a meal that I deemed to be bad or unhealthy, I would be right on the treadmill trying to burn it off. The thing is, I was living with body dysmorphia because I would be looking at myself and not seeing any changes, despite the fact that the numbers on the scales were dropping, despite the fact that all my clothes were being super loose and baggy on me, despite the fact that people were telling me that I'm absolutely tiny. I did not see any of that. And in my head, I still felt huge and big. And that's kind of the glimpse of what it is living with body dysmorphia. You don't see those things. And while I was fully immersed in this like restrictive loop, I couldn't see anything past it. But the longer that I went without having a period and continued to get no answers from any doctors as to what is going on. And again, I want to reiterate that nobody has looked into my diet or lifestyle and how that can be such a problem and how I'm overtraining and underfueling myself. I've realized that I caused myself to have hypothalamic anemia and I am the reason why my body is still not in a safe place, continuing to do this restrictive diets and exercise regimes. And also I got to the point where I was just so sick of being miserable, hungry, tired, irritated, that I knew that something needed to change. And I knew that I wanted to feel strong and healthy. And it all started with a mindset shift. And after reading more upon it and how like your diet and lifestyle really depends on your body getting to a safe place, because at the end of the day, the main purpose of why ovulation exists and the whole menstrual cycle is for reproductive reasons. And when the body is not in a place where it feels that it can carry a baby and a pregnancy, then reproduction is going to be the first thing that is going to shut down. Of course, I didn't know that at that time. I know it now. So I started to take steps in order to actually go from a place where I'm just being so restricted with my food to 
eating to fuel my body and not just looking at the calorie content of food and macros, but actually the quality of it to get enough nutrients, to get enough fiber. Over the last five years, I've gained over 20 kg. I've massively reduced my training. I actually started to look into stress management and building stress resilience and not living in a constant fight or flight mode. I also started to prioritize my sleep when I learned how important sleep is for properly opt for optimally working hormones and also things like cultivating a positive relationship with my body and with food which was on the floor when you know, the whole problems with my period started and learning on how I can actually have food freedom and love my body or get to a place of accepting my body regardless of its size or shape. It has been a journey, that's for sure. September last year, it was the first time that I got my period in five years. And I had it consecutively for a number of months without having to use any medications, go back on the pill or use other synthetic hormones. I've done it all through diet and lifestyle changes, which has given me so much hope. And the things that I'm doing right now are all to ensure that my hormones are working optimally. And I'm not saying that I have it all figured out because having HA for five years my hormones were so out of whack for such a long period of time that they are so sensitive. I have to be very intentional on how hard I train, making sure that I recover adequately and also ensuring that I fuel myself properly. Because what I said about the body's main function, a female's body main function is, our purpose is reproduction. And if it's not feeling at the safe place, the reproductive system is going to shut down. So when it feels that it's under threat because it's not getting enough fuel, and you know, that can be intentional or unintentional. At the moment, I am not intentionally starving myself, but I was a couple of years ago. I'm going to put my hand up and completely admit that because I wanted to be the smallest version of me possible. Although I'm not doing that intentionally, sometimes you can underfuel yourself unintentionally. So I have to be very careful that like, I feel myself in a way that is supporting my training, but also while exercise is a great thing. It's amazing and it causes stress on the body, but that acute stress leads to adaptations such as increased fitness levels and increased strength. But over-exercising puts too much stress on the body. And again, the body is then not feeling in a safe space to hold a potential pregnancy. And having kids at the present moment is not on my priority list, but it definitely is down the line. And this is why I have to be really careful to find that that right balance and prioritize my schedule and tasks so I don't lean towards the fence of reaching burnout or being overly stressed and it's so freaking hard to do that as a business owner because there's so much that relies on you. And I mean, I mean, everything relies on you. Okay. If you don't have a team of people that like does it for you, you wear so many hats in the business and it's hard not to get stressed. And I'm not saying that I'm in a position where I eliminated all my stress, but I've learned how to manage my stress and also build stress resilience on how to react to things that are in my control in a more calmer way, but also let go of things that are not in my control. And when it comes to stress, I was never a person that was even able to relax for five minutes without just feeling like I'm wasting my time. So I lived in a constant state of fight or flight. And you know, it's so funny that only when I started to learn on how my body works and being more in tune with my body, all these things came to surface. I had these pink blinders on and 
not knowing that the actions and habits I was engaging in were actually harming my health and wellness. And I've done that for years, but now I'm on this position where I'm no longer ignoring the signs and signals that my body is giving me, but I'm learning how to actually listen to them and then act accordingly so that I can support my hormone and female health as best as I can. And I don't have it all figured out. I am still in this whole learning process. And I think that's actually quite amazing. I am every single day fascinated about my body and what it can do and how it responds to different situations, how it responds to different foods that I eat, the way that I eat, social connections. Every single day is a new opportunity for me to act in accordance with how I actually want to feel. So I want this season of the Transform with MG podcast to be all about helping you understand your body and get in tune with your body better so that you can feel at your best. Over the next couple of episodes, my aim is to share with you everything that I know and also everything that I'm learning along the way. It is still a journey for me and I am still finding out new ways and better ways that I can support my body and I want you to also have the resources and tools. So I'm going to wrap it up here, but I'm hoping to see you in the future episodes don't forget to subscribe at whatever platform you're listening to and please leave a review and rating if you enjoyed this episode